Welcome to the video. It is pretty early, uh, which I'm used to getting up early, and I like it. I enjoy it. Um, gives me some kind of feeling that I'm grinding and that I'm doing stuff. So um, I'm actually gonna go through my phone now and see what today's video is going to be about. But I'm gonna tell you one thing for sure: it's not gonna be anything fancy. It's just gonna be me and you having a good time learning some something about fitness nutrition or whatnot maybe just life in general and we're gonna have fun so let me figure out what this video is going to be about and let's get started It's been about like 10 hours since I filmed that first video uh, with the coffee this morning and I finally know what the topic of this video is but um, you do too since uh, I'm sure you're not clicking on a video that you didn't read the title of uh, so it's the three top worst mistakes I made as a newbie lifter when I first started going to the gym but um, what I want you to know and, and realize is that I'm not making this uh, top five or top ten whatever video in order to just get views or whatever but these are actually the three top things that I freaking hate that I did and I didn't realize on time I lost so much time and effort and these are actually the three top things that I wish I had acted on if somebody told me hey man this is what it is it's a fact just act on it and you'll, you'll do a lot better. I wish somebody told me that and I wish I actually realized it and acted on it, but please, I'm gonna tell you these three top things. Act on them, make sure you do them right because they're, it's, they're gonna save you so much time and effort and it's gonna be very worthwhile, okay? So as you saw me there, I did some abs. Um, I usually do them at the gym because I use cables, I use some weights and, and whatnot, so I prefer doing them um, at the gym. But today is like my day off. I only did some so I can kind of put it in the video so you guys can see that I'm doing something. I, I wasn't really training abs, but uh, my point is um, when I was growing up and b long before I, I even went to the gym, I always believed, I, I think that the, the general belief was that in order to have abs, you got to train your abs like crazy. You got to do a million crunches. There were all this... Uh, crunch machines and whatnot all those butterfly machines that are like wobbling on your on your stomach Want to get a flat sexy stomach without struggling on exercise equipment or ever going to the gym? Want to get jaw-dropping rock-hard abs without doing a single crunch? Well, now you can change your life without changing your life introducing the all-new Abtronic X2 The belief was that you have to hit your abs hard in order to get six pack abs, right? Now we all know that it's not about training them, right? Abs are made in the kitchen. That is very much not true. That's my point number one here. That is very much inaccurate. Your abs are absolutely made at the gym. If you wanna have nice toned ripped abs, you gotta train them and you gotta train them hard. So yes, you need to be at a very low body fat percentage in order to show your abs so you can see them well. But even if you're at a very low body fat percentage, unless you train your abs, and unless your core is nice, tight, and toned, um, that's not gonna look too good once you're at that body fat percentage. And I did not know this at the beginning. So I would train hard, my nutrition would be on point, and when the time came and I was at like 10% body fat, I looked okay. You know, and that's not what you're going for. Especially like, I know it's very difficult when you're bulking, you're adding weight, you have fat over your stomach, and 
you train, you focus on your bench, on your deadlifts, on your squats, and you think this is what I need to focus on, compound movements, I need to improve on all that, I'm gonna train abs later, I don't really have to hit abs, maybe like do a 10 minute ab session here and there, but trust me, if you wanna have nice toned ripped abs, you gotta train them hard. So what I would do is I would dedicate a full session uh, twice a week to actually hit abs hard because when you get to that time when you need to cut to, to lean down and you you work so hard for like two three four months it is not enough to train them while you're cutting you have to have those abs the, the abs are just like any other muscle and they're actually a pretty big group of muscles so they really need to be trained do not make the same mistake I did I did not train them and as I mentioned, when I got super lean, I wasn't happy. So then when I started bulking, I knew that this time I have to hit abs regularly. Because if I don't, when I cut down again and I only train my abs for like a couple of months, maybe three months, I'm not gonna be happy at the end of the journey. So one thing to remember is abs are made at the gym, but they're revealed in the kitchen. So you gotta train your abs and you gotta train them hard. Just look at that. It is taking me way too long to film this video, almost like 48 hours since I started. And uh, we're kind of halfway, so let's speed it up, right? The second thing, that is really really important for you to remember is that you really should not pay attention to stupid shit like I've said this a million times in many other videos that we complicate things way too much and we really don't need to so when I first started I was stressed about things like am I eating uh, enough times in a day is my protein evenly spread throughout the day am i having that protein shake right after the workout when's the best time to have your creatine what should your split be based on your body type or or whatever i would read all these things and i would be like like all confused and shit so this is not the way to go especially not when you're starting out what you need to focus on is keeping it as simple as possible but being real about if you're having progress or not. There are actually only five things you need to focus on, okay? First thing is to eat enough protein. You have to eat one gram of protein per one pound of body weight every single day. Now, this is not exact science that that's the exact number you have to eat, but it's a pretty good uh, guideline that you can follow and just keep it simple, it's easy to track, do it. Second thing is you need to be in a caloric deficit if you're trying to lose weight or in a caloric surplus if you're trying to build muscle. The third thing is you have to have a plan, a workout plan. I don't care if it's gonna be a push-pull legs or if it's gonna be like an upper uh, lower body uh, split, if it's gonna be a full body routine, pick one that you think you're gonna like and it's gonna work for you and just follow it, stay consistent. The fourth thing is progressive overload. Make sure that you're progressing with your lifts. Don't be just lifting the same weights the same amount of times for a year or two. Make sure you're progressing with, with the weights you're lifting. And the fifth and also very important thing is start taking creatine and don't give a shit about any other supplements. Five grams of creatine every single day. It's the most researched supplement. Everybody's taking it. You don't have to cycle it. There is no side effects to it. So you need to start taking five grams of creatine every single day. You can Google it, you can do your research. It's absolutely safe, beneficial. So I would start doing it right now. If you follow just these five things that I just mentioned and stick to it for a year, two, three, you're gonna make 
great progress. You're gonna get at least close to that body that you wanna make. You're not gonna be winning bodybuilding competitions and, and becoming world champion in, in powerlifting or whatnot, but you're gonna make some serious gains. You're gonna be happy with the results. And as time goes by and you're getting better, you're progressing, you're lifting more, you're eating better, you will learn more and you are gonna start applying other things to the way you work out, to the way you eat, to your sleep, your water intake, whatever it is. But start with this five things that I just mentioned and you're gonna do great. No, I'm shitting you not. It is six o'clock in the morning uh, and it's taking me three days to give you my top three reasons. Uh, my top three reasons, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. But today I actually woke up to hit the gym. Uh, it's gonna be a nice push session. I'm about to get ready uh, and go. So before we do that, uh, please, it's taking me three days to film this video, so please hit the thumbs up button because it really helps the channel uh, grow. It means that more people are gonna watch this video, that more people are gonna come and subscribe to the channel potentially, and maybe eventually I can quit my nine to five job and maybe make more videos, maybe make one video a day instead of one video in three days, you know? So yeah, every, every help is appreciated. Please hit the thumbs button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you right after the gym to talk about the third thing that I wish I knew before I started hitting the gym. See you in a bit. All right, boys and girls, I think it's time to tell you the third thing that I would really like you to avoid if you're a beginner lifter. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So the third thing is to not go for the six pack abs right away. And what do I mean by this? Most guys that are starting out have like a layer of fat uh, because they're either skinny fat or fat, maybe just chubby, but still you have like a layer of fat that you wanna get rid of and show those six pack abs, right? And I know that sounds right and, and it makes sense to you right now, but the problem with that is that you actually don't have any abs to show like the abs are a muscle as well so they need to be trained and if you're a beginner lifter a newbie then um, you don't have much muscle right you don't have developed abs you don't have a lot of muscle in your uh, arms your chest your legs so you're not going to look good once you get to a very low body fat percentage that's why i recommend that you first take a look at your diet make sure you start incorporating whole foods a lot of protein, just start eating things that are good for you and also find a workout that, that you're going to be able to stick with. So once you find what kind of workouts work for you and you start to progress, then you can take an even better look at your diet. Maybe start bulking is what I would recommend so you can build as much muscle as possible. You've been chubby or skinny fat or whatever you've been already for, for some period of time. Another six months to a year, will not change that much. But once you actually build some muscle underneath and once you're actually into a good workout routine, when you start cutting down, you'll be a lot better at cutting down. You'll be a lot better at working out so you can retain all the muscle that you actually build. So it's gonna be a very good place that you're in. Also that first period of time when you start lifting is the best time for you to actually build muscle so why not let your body have all the nutrients all the vitamins and all the food that it needs to have more energy more strength at the gym so you can make the most gains possible just make sure you have a good workout routine start eating foods that are good for you and give it like six months to a year for you to actually progress and then you'll cut down and get those abs. And as I mentioned, you need to work on your core while you do all of this. Alrighty guys, well, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you spending a part of your day to actually watch my video. So thank you very, very much. I hope you'll continue to watch my videos. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up button and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.